Thank you for coming. The inaugural Wichita State University Fairmount College of Liberal Arts and Sciences Hall of Fame ceremony is now open. You may be seated. Good afternoon, I'm Andrew Hipsley, Dean of the Fairmount College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. We are pleased to welcome friends, relatives, students, university administrators, faculty and staff to this important occasion. Ms. Lynn Davis, our Robert L. Town Distinguished Professor of Organ provided the processional music on the magnificent Marcuson organ, and you'll love the recessional piece too. Please join me in showing appreciation for her time and talents. Thank you very much. On stage today is Dr. Michael Hall, who carried the lamp of learning and led the processional. Michael is an associate professor of political science and the 2019 recipient of the John R. Barrier Award for Distinguished Teaching in the Humanities and Social Sciences. Thank you, Michael. Our lamp of learning has a significant place in Fairmount College's history. By tradition, a lamp was passed from senior class president to the junior class president at commencement. This demonstrated that the light of learning sweeps away the darkness of ignorance. Our inductees, who you will meet momentarily, exemplify the significance of enlightenment and its influence in shaping lives. It is now my pleasure to ask Interim President Anti Tompkins to welcome you all. Well, obviously, my, one of my jobs is to welcome you, so welcome to this inaugural ceremony. I'm excited to be here, and I hope you are also. I also want to say congratulations to Dean Hippisley and Dr. Miller and all the other staff who've organized this inaugural event so that we can kind of enjoy this first class of the Hall of Fame for Fairmont College. Of course, I'm here to also extend our congratulations to our inductees in this first class of the Fairmont College Hall of Fame. To those of you who are here, and I know we have one who couldn't join us, I want to extend congratulations to you. We are so proud of your accomplishments and your connection to this college and this university. You're an inspiration to us all, and we are very proud to have you as our inaugural inductees. On behalf of the university, I extend a heartfelt thanks to each of you, our congratulations, and our best wishes. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. It is now my pleasure to ask Rick Muma, Provost of the University, to say a few words. Well, good afternoon. Uh, I'm very pleased to be here for this inaugural event, and I want to thank you all for being here today for our first Fairmount College of Liberal Arts and Sciences Hall of Fame induction. Some truly special people who have dedicated their lives to the furtherance of liberal arts education surround us. Two that are going to be inducted today um, graduated, actually, from the University of Wichita, and one graduated from Wichita State University. So as many of you know, Wichita State University began as a private congregational preparatory liberal arts school and was formally founded in 1895 during a boom in college and university creation. And also, as many of you know, the college leaders received a land parcel from the developers of the adjacent Fairmount neighborhood and in response renamed their school Fairmount College. Today, Fairmount College, Fairmount College of Liberal Arts and Sciences represents the history of the liberal arts and sciences as a cornerstone to the development of Wichita State University. We are very proud of this history and the foundation that it still provides today. On behalf of Wichita State University, I am honored to represent academic affairs and the rest of the university in this inaugural ceremony. Let me be the first to congratulate the inductees and thank you for being here.
The light of learning sweeps away the darkness of ignorance. That's quite a striking image, and it places quite a burden of responsibility of those of us who are educators, whose job it is to bring out the light of learning. And this is, of course, the chief goal of the institution. And the Fairmount College of Liberal Arts and Sciences plays a special and important role in reaching that goal. The light we bring is to expose a liberal arts and education to our students. Our role is nothing less than to transform the students through the power of the liberal arts. So what is this transformative power? It can be recognized in the different ways the liberal arts changes a student. First, it changes students by cultivating diversity of thought, learning to allow for a difference of opinion, assessing multiple approaches and methods, listening to and assessing a range of perspectives, being open to differences, welcoming ideas that are not the same as theirs, and welcoming the people that carry those ideas, and being prepared to be influenced by them and even changed by them. This is the change in a person that mitigates against a toxic, tribal way of thinking that's become all too dangerous a norm in our society, sweeping away the darkness of ignorance. It changes students by emphasizing honesty, integrity, and an ethical approach to engaging with the world because it foregrounds the pursuit of truth based on facts. It teaches the student that the pursuit itself is thrilling, sweeping away the darkness of ignorance. And it changes students by making them lifelong learners, by instilling them in them a love of learning new things and a confidence that new things can be learnt. And what a precious training this is for students entering a tumultuous workforce where the demand and the skill set is ever shifting so that the most valuable commodity is adaptability, sweeping away the darkness of ignorance. The multi-layered nature of a liberal arts edu education opens doors for a student to discover what they are truly passionate about, so helping them to discover who they are and their unique role in this difficult and challenging world. The unplanned, unintended, accidental bumping into unrelated concepts that come from unrelated disciplines is what works that special kind of magic. The light of learning sweeps away the darkness of ignorance. On this lamp of learning in front of you here, there is engraved a Greek phrase, eis andra to lion, literally, unto the perfect person. So it's a gift. But I think a better translation of to lion isn't perfect so much as complete. To the person who is complete, who has grown up, a person who has reached their goal in life. And this is the ultimate power of the liberal arts, to help a person reach their goal in life. Today, we celebrate the transformative power of a liberal arts education by briefly bringing back to this place of learning three citizens of the world who have reached their goal by discovering who they are and what their unique role is in changing the world, and then having the power to fulfill that role. They are living, breathing examples of everything I have said. And so you really are an inspiration to us all here. And as the college where you started out, we're going to allow ourselves to feel a bit proud of you. Thank you.
We will now confer the, on, the awards upon our honorees. Miss Judy Bell, Ambassador Robert D. Blackwell, and Dr. Donna Sweet have been selected as the inaugural cohort of the Fairmount College of Liberal Arts and Sciences Hall of Fame at Wichita State University. Unfortunately, the ambassador cannot be with us today. But will Judy Bell and Donna Sweet please stand? Through your lifelong commitment to serving others and making the world a better place, we honor and appreciate your life work's highly significant impact on the region, the nation, and the world. Please be seated. Now the fun part. We will now eat, recognize each honoree individually with introductory comments and a short video. Miss Judy Bell, graduated from the University of Wichita, University of Wichita in 1961, majoring in psychology and minoring in sociology. While a student, Judy greatly enjoyed Dr. Hugo Wall's logic courses and believes they opened her mind to many facets of life. She also believes that a liberal arts education is important to giving one a broad-based education. Her favorite memory as a student was graduating. <laughs> because it was completing something that she had started seven years earlier. It took her this long to finish her degree as she alternated semesters, taking classes and playing golf. Here's more about Judy's life outside of her time here. Wichita native Judy Bell was a three-time Kansas State women's amateur champion in golf. In 1952, at age 15, 1953, and 1954, she played her first Broadmoor Invitation Tournament at age 11 and won that competition in 1957, 1958, and 1960. Over her career, she competed in 38 USGA championships. She was a member of the Curtis Cup team in 1960 and 1962 and served as captain in 1986 and 1988. In 2016, she received the Bob Jones Award, the highest honor bestowed by the USGA. She was awarded an honorary membership to the RNA Golf Club of St. Andrew, Scotland in 2015, one of the first women to be offered membership since its inception in 1754. She has also been inducted into 11 golf halls of fame and has received numerous awards commemorating her many achievements, including those from the PGA of America, the Colorado Golf Association, and the El Palmer Foundation. Judy was elected president of the United States Golf Association in 1996, serving one term. She was the first woman to hold that position and one of only two in USGA's 125-year history. Judy cultivated and promoted youth and diversity programs in the game and in 1999 became consulting director for the USGA's grant and fellowship program. This initiative awarded $65 million to nonprofit golf programs nationwide that serve economically disadvantaged youth, minority youth, girls, and individuals with disabilities. Judy Bell. I first got to know her while serving in the USGA Fellowship Program. Her guidance while I was in Colorado Springs and long after I moved on helped me develop skills that I still use today. 
I think about Judy often. With heartfelt thanks. For the life's lessons she taught me. Work hard and persevere. Always with a smile on my face. And I have something for her. Judy, please come forward to receive your medallion and to say a few words. I only have a few pages. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, well, it did take me seven years to graduate. I, would rec I wouldn't recommend this to anyone unless they have parents who are willing to pay for both tuition and golf. I went to the University of Arizona first because I thought I could play more golf there. Then I found out they didn't have a women's golf team, so that didn't work out too well. So I moved back to Wichita and started classes alternating semesters with playing golf uh, on the winter circuit in Florida. I want to thank Fairmont College for this honor of induction into the Hall of Fame. I understand that Dean Hipsley grew up in St. Andrews and is an avid golfer so this might have something to do with it. <laughs> and if so, a special thank you to Dean. I'm very honored by this induction, and my mother would be so pleased. She made me promise to earn a college degree when I was only keen to play golf, and I'm so glad I kept that promise. Thank you. Dr. Donna Sweet first graduated from Wichita State University in 1970, majoring in biological sciences and minoring in chemistry. Donna credits Dr. Josephine Fugate, Dean of Women and Professor of Mathematics, with being a strong woman who helped young women grow and develop and be leaders. Donna recognizes the importance of a liberal arts education as one that brings about a broad appreciation of the world and all that it encompasses. Outside the classroom, Donna's fondest memories of her time and involvement with the Newman Center and serving as a marching cadet in the Army Blues. Here's a bit more about Donna's life outside of her time in Wichita State. Dr. Donna Sweet is a professor of internal medicine at the University of Kansas School of Medicine, Wichita. She is a delegate to the American Medical Association 
and a member of the leadership for the American College of Physicians as a master and past president of its Board of Regents. In 2015, Donna was awarded an honorary doctorate from Wichita State University in recognition of her more than three decades of service to patients with AIDS, HIV, as well as her contributions to healthcare as a clinical educator. She is certified as an HIV specialist by the American Academy of HIV Medicine, of which she is a past board chair. She is chair of the National Harbor Path Board, an organization that assists patients in accessing HIV, hepatitis, and cancer treatment medication. She is a newly elected member of the National HIV MA Board and is a longtime member of the Health HIV Board. At the HIV program in her clinic, supported by federal Ryan White funds, she cares for approximately 1,300 patients with HIV. She is also the principal investigator and director of the Kansas AIDS Education and Training Center, as well as director of Kansas Care Through Housing, a Housing for People with AIDS grant-funded project. She has traveled extensively nationally and internationally educating physicians about HIV care and treatment. Prior to medical school, she completed a master's degree in biology with emphasis on microbiology, immunology, and worked in a hospital lab as a clinical microbiologist. In 1994, she received the WSU Alumni Recognition Award. Golf and travel round out her life. Please come forward to receive your med medallion and say a few words. Congratulations. Thank you. Should I put this back on? Should we do photograph first? Congratulations. We're going to take a picture. Congratulations again. Thank, Thank you, sweet. More photos. Yeah. Can you get inside? Well, I'm very, very honored, and it's hard to know what to say after that kind of introduction and what the dean has already told us about the joys of a liberal arts education. But WSU gave me the foundation that allowed me to do what I do, take care of patients, teach med students and residents, and be advocates, advocating for the poor among us and for the people who need health care services. I would be remiss if I didn't remember the Gore family at this event because the Gore Scholarship is what got me to Wichita State. I am the first uh, college graduate in my family and the only physician graduate, and it would never have happened without the Gore Scholarship that I was awarded in 1966 when I finished my high school uh, degree. I want to thank everyone who's been a part of this. This is a wonderful honor and I will continue to advocate to young people that they need a liberal arts education. They can specialize in business or medicine or all the other things that they specialize in, but it allows them to understand the world and to enjoy many more aspects than if they focus solely on one thing. So again, thank you very much for this honor, and thank you for what you do for all of our young people. Ambassador Robert D. Blackwell graduated from the University of Wichita in 1962, majoring in English and history. Looking back on his time at campus, Robert remembers close friends and his first love, and an extraordinary girl from Clifton, Kansas, who led him to intellectual inquiry and better grades because he wanted to impress her. He remembers crisp Saturday football afternoons at Veterans Field when the Shockers often lost, but not always. Perhaps most importantly, he remembers what he took back east from his years at WSU. 
the values of Kansas and its people, honesty, candor, compassion, hard work, a dogged stamina in the face of challenge and adversity, a sense of humor, and a deep and abiding love of country. Here's more about Robert's life outside of his time here. Ambassador Robert D. Blackwell is the Henry A. Kissinger Senior Fellow for U.S. Foreign Policy at the Council on Foreign Relations in New York City and a distinguished scholar at John Hopkins University School of Advanced International Studies in Washington, D.C. He is a former Deputy National Security Advisor at the White House, where he worked for three presidents. He has served as presidential envoy to Iraq and as U.S. Ambassador to India. He received the Commander's Cross of the Order of Merit by the Federal Republic of Germany for his contribution to German unification and the Padma Bhushan Award from the Government of India for distinguished service of a high order. A former Peace Corps volunteer in Malawi and a Harvard University faculty member for 14 years, Robert is also the author of many books and articles. His latest book, War by Other Means, Geoeconomics and Stagecraft, published by Harvard University Press, was named a Best Foreign Policy Book of 2016 by Foreign Affairs. He is a jazz enthusiast with more than 10,000 songs in his collection and an amateur landscape photographer. Hello, everybody. I'm speaking with you from the Council on Foreign Relations in New York City, and I'm delighted to be with you even uh, through this artificial means. I'm deeply regretful I'm not there in Wichita, uh, but uh, I've had a, a very long-standing commitment to chair a meeting here in New York of U.S. and China experts to discuss the future of world order and what the two countries might do to try to re-establish uh, some stability uh, around the globe. So I'm not there, but I regret it. I wish I was. Uh, let me say a bit about my experience at uh, WSU. Uh, it was, of course, more than 50 years ago, but this honor that uh, has been bestowed on me, of course, uh, has led me to go back to those days and remember. And uh, I can say with some conviction that I have no negative memories about my time at the university. Uh, I uh, would point out just uh, two dimensions of it, uh, one more elevated than the other. Uh, I uh, received terrific teaching when I was there. I'll just mention two professors and uh, how they contributed to my uh, further career. First, Kelly Sowards, uh, the legendary history teacher. I took first a course on the ancient world and then others. And he ignited my interest in history. He was a wonderful teacher. As some of you know, he was a, a, a expert on Erasmus, the Dutch 16th century philosopher, perhaps the, the father of humanism. And uh, Kelly Sowards was a humanist. He took all the time in the world with students, including with me, and I was not, at least at the outset, uh, much of a student. I became somewhat better as time passed. But my love of history, which Kelly Sowers began, uh, has lasted through a career in the diplomatic service and in strategic affairs. And I owe an enormous debt to him. The other professor was the distinguished American poet, Bruce Cutler, who uh, began my interest in uh, the world of poetry and ideas. Uh, he uh, taught a course in the Romantic Poets, which I took, and he was the first one to introduce me to the notion that uh, each word matters in a sentence, in a sentence of poetry or a sentence of prose. And uh, he began, without any doubt, 
the development of my writing style, which again uh, has been an important part of my life. So the teaching I received there, and I could name others uh, who were uh, equally influential on me. So that's one category I wanted to mention. The other is simply, lest I seem uh, too somber here, uh, I spent a lot of time uh, playing competitive tennis, which was a great joy at the time, although I uh, lost <laughs> probably more than I won. And at the Cedars Bar, where, which I closed uh, many a night after last call. But as I say, the university has uh, been a big part of the development of my professional life. The university has uh, made me to some considerable degree what I am today professionally. And uh, without that, uh, I'm uh, pretty sure that I would have uh, been doing something pretty menial uh, around uh, uh, Kansas uh, without the interest in the world that the uh, WSU uh, began for me. So again, I'm very uh, disappointed not to be there. I wish you all uh, the best and go Shockers. I would like to ask John Dryford, Dr. John Dryford, Professor of History and member of the Wichita Committee on Foreign Relations to come to the stage to accept the medallion on Ambassador Blackwell's behalf. Would you do that? Well, this concludes the conferring of the awards and the recognition of the inductees. And I invite each of you to attend our reception next door in the Miller Concert Hall. Students will help you get there uh, in Dirksen Fine Arts Center. Professor Hall, will you please come forward and close the ceremony for us? The inaugural Wichita State University Fairmount College of Liberal Arts and Sciences Hall of Fame ceremony is now concluded. Please remain standing for the recessional.